Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Summerlin and I am here to talk to you today about annotated bibliographies. Alright, so go, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so an annotated bibliography, this is a big long word um, and I know it can be inter overwhelming but really annotated means to take notes on and bibliography just means a list of sources. So this literally means a list of sources you've taken notes on. So a list of sources you've studied. Okay, so this is the next big step for your senior project and it is a good way, annotated bibliographies exist as a way of gathering information before you start to write something because you want to be informed before you speak out about a thing. So you need to know background knowledge, you need to know facts, you need research before you can speak, before you can write anything. You have to have those things. So this is the next step. You'll be gathering research. I have uh, other videos that talk to you about the best ways to gather sources. Um, but this is what your annotated bibliography will look like. And again, we're going to give you the template to that. So we want you to make sure that you follow it. You're going to start with an italicized paragraph. Uh, that explains the topic of your research. We sometimes call this a focus paragraph. Um, other times we call it uh, a topic paragraph. Those are sort of interchangeable here. But you're looking at about four to five sentences uh, that tell the reader basically what is your topic and why are you researching it. So that gives your reader an idea of what the sources, the ability to evaluate whether the sources you've listed here are going to be appropriate to that topic in the, in the argument that you have. You might want to include a research question here. Um, so you'll have a minimum of five sources. We want those to be from reputable places. Uh, I strongly encourage at least three from Galileo. Um, I'm going to make a separate video on how to use Galileo effectively. Um, SIRS researcher, Google, Scholar, those sorts of places. Um, at least three need to come from there. In, in the perfect world, all five would come from Galileo, but at this level, you should be able to um, discuss the credibility of a source. Two can be open sources. No matter what, your sources must be credible. That means they need to be backed with um, a credible author, they need to have research of their own, they need to be legitimate sources that are good, um, that contain good evidence and good um, research for what you're going to talk about. So if you build your paper on a faulty foundation by using n not good research, then your, your whole paper is going to be flawed. Uh, you're going to have a proper APA citation. We don't do MLA here at Grovetown High School. Senior project is done in APA. It's just much more common in the real world. Um, for each of your works with a summary of the work in about a short paragraph of four to five sentences. I strongly recommend leading more towards five sentences. I like to think, you know, three to four sentences of summary. Um, you know, one to two sentences of credibility, like how, how useful is this source. Um, formatting, we're going to give you the format, but again, you need to make sure that you follow it. We're following APA here. APA might be a little bit different from what you've worked on, but we're going to go through that. You're going to alphabetize your entries, so you're going to have five sources. Say, for instance, that you have a source written by um, Jones, Brown, and Johnson, then Brown is going to be first because B comes before either of the J's. So you'll alphabetize by the author's last name. Usually that's author's last name. If you have a source that doesn't have an author, you need, to des you need to definitely check to see whether that's a credible source or not. Um, sometimes we do have organizations that are acting as an author. Um, so you might have mad mothers against destructive decisions that has 
that has paid somebody to come together and, and write this article, but they would be that, that arterial body. Um, just be careful that you're not using a lot of those, and if you, you do have one, you might want to check with your teacher to see if that's an acceptable source. Okay, you're going to single space your focus paragraph. Remember, that's that topic paragraph we mentioned up here. You're going to single space that. Spacing is the biggest issue on annotated bibs. Um, and you're going to single space the summaries. So these are both single spaced. But you're going to double space the citations. That's probably the biggest mistake I see a lot of. All right, so let's look at this rubric real quick. We're going to do an annotated bib. Other people might be doing a liter literature review or an outline. We're doing an annotated bib. Um, so again, five sources, 15 points. That meets them, what, three points apiece? Um, the citations, if you cite those sources accurately, you're looking at another three points apiece. Um, formatting, you want the class information, the header, the spacing, the margins, all that stuff, 10 points for getting that right. So if you're looking here just by doing just by plugging and playing, you can get a certain amount of points. Like, this is not difficult. The writing of the annotated bib is not difficult. Finding the research is the difficult part. Um, then you have, make sure that it is correctly formatted as an annotated bib. And we give you this format, so you definitely should be able to do it. Uh, content of the annotated bibs, paragraphs. So your paragraphs are what I tell you they should be. Like, they're appropriate. Everything is the right length, the right quality, and your grammar and your writing style is um, at the correct level. All right, so if you flip that page over, you're going to see this is an example of one. And I have printed it two to a page. This is printed two to a page. Um, yours won't be printed probably. I don't think I'm having my students print them. I think I'll be looking at it electronically. Um, but you won't be doing it two to a page. This is just an example, okay? Um, so in APA format, you're going to have a, t a cover page. That's what this is. And that cover page is going to have all of this information here. It, whatever the subject of your research, so this example is using poverty, you're going to write that right there. Now some people might be making a big deal about headers at the top of these papers. We're like, there's the page number. The page number is like right up here. It's super tiny. I'm sorry. Page number. Um, but uh, some people might talk about headers and running headers that go up here. That's a new change to APA. We, they used to require a running header. They don't require running headers anymore. So if you hear somebody talking about a running header, just follow your teacher's advice. Um, this information is pretty straightforward. In um, AP Lit, your number is going to be 407. Um, you're going to put the day it's due. They're going to want you to spell that out, September 22nd, 2022. Then you go to the second page. So here's, again, your page number. That second page is going to have a title in the middle, and then it's going to have a subtitle that is off to the side. Yes, I know this is off to the side. Just accept it. Then this is your topic paragraph, that focus paragraph. And it's not complicated writing. It doesn't need to be over the top. For my senior project, I am interested in researching poverty. Boom. Again, this is a good place to include a research question if you have one. Then you get to your actual citation. This is a citation. This is an article citation. And you notice how it's double spaced. This is double spaced. You also notice that there is a, a hanging indent here. Um, you might notice too that they don't do first names in APA. They only do initials in APA. This is to uh, avoid bias because there are some people in our world that don't want to read an article written by a woman or they don't want to read an article written by somebody who has, you know, a name that doesn't sound generalized. So they do that. They only go with first initial to remove any bias. Uh, then there is, so there's author here title of the article and you'll notice that this is written like a sentence with only the first word being capitalized the rest of it is not capitalized then you have the journal title which is in italics along with this so all of this right here is in italics including that that number the journal number 
Then you have the issue number, the page numbers, and the DOI number. So the DOI number is um, almost like an article's social security number. If you put that link into any search engine, it would take you to that article. Maybe not that article because I faked that DOI, so <laughs> but it will take you where it needs to go. Um, and then you have here this summary of what that article is about, and you'll notice that it is single spaced. Single spaced. Okay, this is a book citation. Hopefully you are not using any books unless you are reading the whole book. And then this is a website citation. Again, double spaced, single space, double space, single space. All right. So I hope that gets you a little explanation of how this should be formatted. Um, um, if you have any questions, you know where to find me.